One, two. <clears throat> Justin, whenever you're ready, buddy, we are. Thank you so much for joining us here at Merrimack TV tonight. Unfortunately, we didn't see a junior varsity Tomahawks win. Great game, though. I'm Nicholas LaValle, the Town of Merrimack's Media Services Coordinator, and tonight on Play by Play is Brian Gagnon. How's it going, Nick? Brian, I'm spending a Friday evening with you. <laughs> Couldn't be any better, it's right? It's great. <laughs> Oh, we got a good one tonight. Um, Merrimack, of course, coming off that tremendous win here on Tuesday against Nashua North. And we'll see how they respond here tonight against an Albert team that looking for their first win, but uh, do not be deceived by their 0-5 record. All of their games have been close. They played some tough games too, tough, tough opponents to start the season. Yeah, it was fun uh, checking out a junior varsity game. We haven't had a junior varsity basketball game on Merrimack TV, I think, in two years, and I think we did, it was a girls' game. I think you're right. We might have, we might have done one last year. Yeah, I'm maybe trying we to did. remember. These seasons are blurring one into the next now. Yes, they are. <laughs> You know, the first year we did this, it was very exciting. And it still is exciting. I don't want to mislead anyone. But we've done so many games now that only an expert like Brian Gagnon with his amazing memory to, of some of these players. And As we uh, looking at the starting lineups for both teams here tonight. Also want to thank uh, Alvern Bronco fans for tuning in to tonight's game, whether you're watching on MerrimackTV.com or streaming devices. Okay. For your Merrimack Tomahawk. They caught you off guard, Nick. They Three really did. <laughs> number two, Matt Baluki. Number four, Lou Dufosi. And guard, number 11, David Roy. Number 23, Jensen Monroe. Standing at six foot four, big man, Isaac. Game two of our doubleheader here on Merrimack TV. Just about to get underway. Tomahawks and Broncos. 
Uh, as we mentioned at the outset, Merrimack with a massive upset win here on Tuesday night against Nashua North. And, uh, you know, like we said earlier in the season, the game after a big win or a big loss usually tells you a lot more about your team. And this has kind of a letdown game written all over in the, in the book. And uh, we asked Coach Denton about it after the game last week, and he said every game is one game at a time with them. When they lost to Memorial by a point right before Christmas, it was one game. And, and when they beat North here, it's one game. So they're treating everything one game at a time, as they should. It will be Garrett Hall on the tip against Isaac Infante. And we are underway in Merrimack. Cam Kruger with it for Alvern. I feel like we just did this, Brian. Deja vu all over again. <laughs> and an offensive foul on Aiden Mills. Hey, hey, stop, stop. Oh. And we have... Uh, like an issue with something. Oh, couldn't get the uh, number correct in the book. So number three, that is Eden Mills with the foul. And the Tomahawks have possession. They come in with a three and two record in Division One. A couple of them screen it away. And Fonte kicks it to Roy. Three point bid. No good, and the rebound is off Jensen Monroe, out of bounds. It'll be Alvern Ball. Well, as you saw in the starting lineups, Roy, Veluzzi, DeFossis, Infante, and Monroe out to start this game for Merrimack. Whether you're watching this game on Merrimack TV or our friends in Hudson, at Hudson TV, Jim McIntosh and his crew uh, is sharing our feed tonight on their channel 21. So whether you're watching in Hudson or Merrimack or from anywhere in the country at MerrimackTV.com, we want to hear from you. We'd love to be able to give you a shout out. Just go to Merrimack TV's Facebook page, Facebook.com slash Merrimack TV or Twitter.com slash Merrimack TV. Let us know who you're cheering for, where you're watching, how you're watching. And uh, we'll try to give you a shout out. The we, student section surly into it tonight. They are definitely on fire now. They were a little sleepy at the JV game, but they are definitely alive now. Good look inside by Kruger. Number 10, Garrett Hall working on Infante. Left hand scoop is no good. I don't know how he missed that one. And the floater by Aiden Mills is good. And a 2-0 Alvern lead. Matthew Veluzzi, who hit a huge three-pointer here on Tuesday night, finds David Roy on the cut. It's going to be off Roy's foot, out of bounds. Well, I know the Veluzzi family is definitely watching tonight. I think Matt's, uh, Matt's aunt, rather, Kelly Veluzzi, is definitely watching in the garage. I'm sure uh, Bob Camberlin might be there as well. So I want to give a shout out to the Veluzzi family watching tonight at MerrimackTV.com. That's a nice scoop by Garrett Hall. And the Broncos out to a quick 4-0 lead. Roy guarded by Aiden Mills. They go to Infante. Infante had 15 on Tuesday night. Hit some big free throws in that fourth quarter as well. Roy gets to the middle, but it's stolen. Kruger. Over to Sam DeWitt. And an offensive foul. It can be a Mills again. Second foul on Eden Mills. You say an illegal screen. Illegal scream? Uh, screen. Screen, okay. Yes. Well, Nurmek did a great job breaking the press the other night. Faluzzi, Faluzzi had Roy on a touchdown pass there. But didn't want to risk it too, too much here early. 
Oh, a sloppy turnover there. Two on one for Alvin the other way. Layup is no good. Good defense by the Tomahawks in transition. And DeFossis will start the offense now. Tomahawks a little slow coming out of the gate here. Roy, floater, no good. Rebound by Garrett Hall. Alvin looking very strong here early. DeWitt working on Veluzzi. And a near steal by Roy. Loose ball to Veluzzi. He has no numbers, so he's got to pull it back. Infante on the cut. Up and under, no good. Good block by Kruger. And a foul on Merrimack. And that is on Jensen Monroe, his first. Drew McCarthy going to come into the game, as is Mike Flera, the hero of last night's, of uh, Tuesday night's game, rather. Mason Krieger also in, and Jackson Rosa in. It's uh, very clear Coach Denton didn't like something in that starting lineup. As uh, four subs into the game, 335 in. Flera had 19 points in the win on Tuesday night. And the game winning three as well. This time he picks up a foul. Pretty cheap one too. Crowd disagrees. Four nothing Alvin. Almost midway through the first period. And they get Krieger for, uh, no, it's going to be a jump ball. Jump ball as he tied it up. Alvin ball. That was Andrew Harnan on the drive. Or Harmon, rather. And now Merrimack ball. Drew McCarthy on the inbound to Rosa. Rosa had his best game of the season on Tuesday night. Huge layup late in that fourth quarter. McCarthy, ball fakes, underneath to Infante, up fake, and the basket is good. What a pretty up fake there by Isaac Infante. Brian, oh, on the bounce pass. We're just a few seconds into this game, and this gym is electric right now. Good look down low, they kick it over to Kruger, three-point try, way off the mark, rebounded by Rosa. Uh, Friday night crowd here in Merrimack. They're loving it. Infante back to Rosa. Merrimack will start the offense. Rosa goes around the screen. Over to Krieger. Krieger rejected by Garrett Hall. That was with authority. Flera, three-pointer. Yes! Wow. Boy, he's picking up right where he left off on Tuesday. Nice touch on that one. 5-4 Merrimack. Three-point bid for Alvern. No good. And it's going to be out of bounds off Infante. That was Evan Bettencourt on the three-point try. Sean Chipfund into the game for Alvern. If you're watching tonight's game and you want to get a shout out, just follow us on Twitter at Merrimack TV. Let us know who you're cheering for and how you're watching. We'll give you a shout out. We welcome Tomahawks and Broncos fans alike. Offensive foul on Sean Chipfund. And Austin Denton is going to get a timeout. 30-second timeout for the Tomahawks. We have a 5-4 lead. Looks like our friend Peggy Silva just hollered at us on Twitter, and she says, let's go DeFosis from Florida. So we have uh, Tomahawks fans in Florida tonight watching. Thanks for tuning in, Peggy. We appreciate that. I wonder how warm the weather is in Florida right now. Peggy, we'll take an invite. Brian and I would love to come down. We'll invite ourselves down. We just, I think I just invited us to Peggy's house. So, But she's a Tomahawks fan, right? Oh, yeah. I'll dine with Broncos fans if it's in Florida. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, you would anyway. <laughs> I mean, I'll 
I'll take the Florida you'll weather. Take, you'll take any um, invite, Brian. <laughs> the Florida drivers, I, I, I can, I'll, I'll, I'll pass do without, on. Right. I, I can do without that, but you know, the tourists and you know, I'll take the weather. Also, we have Gina and Rover in Manchester. Says, "Go Tomahawks!" Big Tomahawks fan. With Gina and Rover, Kiki, not so much. I think she's cheering for the Broncos tonight. Krieger with the ball for Merrimack. Tried to hit Isaac Infante on the roll. And a nice play by Garrett Hall. He's done a great job defensively for the Broncos. DeWitt uses the screen, tries a three. No good. Rebound to Betancourt. And Rosa goes way up to get that one. Rosa playing like a big man right there, getting that rebound. Gets the screen from Drew McCarthy. And that pass just off his fingertips. Here is Kruger for Alburn. DeWitt trying to go inside. And he missed the lay and he was wide open. But now he's going to get that one. Four points for Garrett Hall. And Alburn goes back in the lead. Rosa to Mason Krieger. Now McCarthy, ball fix. Puts it up and in. And the Drews come from the student section. 7-6, Tomahawks. All shot, no good, rebound by McCarthy. Good first quarter for Drew McCarthy, off the bench. McCarthy looking for the cutters. Nobody there, though. Rosa. Guarded by Betancourt. Trying to get a screen from Infante. Little turnaround is good for Jackson Rosa. Tomahawks lead it 9-6. So a little shot of energy from the bench. There's wholesale subs from uh, Austin Denton. If you caught the replay on that one, that's courtesy of the, our, the Slez Hammer. Justin Slez back at the Town Hall TV studio doing replays tonight. Nice block by Infante. And the loose ball is tied up. I believe this one will be Alvin Ball. And yes, it will. It'll be... Alvin possession, 7.7 seconds left. Monroe and DeFossis back in for Isaac Infante. And did not see the other. Kruger for three. No good. And they get a foul. And somehow two, two <laughs> seconds are going back on the clock. I was just chuckling because the energy at the uh, student section is just already off the rails. So, oh, they're bringing it as usual. This is Friday night. That's what happens here. So Jen, Jensen Monroe gets the foul, and a very generous two seconds added to the clock. Let's see what happens here. Can Alvin take advantage? I thought maybe half a second, but uh, we'll we'll see here. Two seconds, plenty of time to get a shot off. Well, they straighten out the clock, and uh, they now have added the two seconds. Baseline out of bounds here for Alvin. Looking for a lob. Oh, nice cut. And they get the foul. Chip fund will go to the line. And that is on Jackson. Uh, I'm sorry, Mike uh, Flera. Yes, Flera's second. 
So Flair and Monroe now with two each. Sean Chipfond at the line. He is a freshman. And he hits the first. Trying to make it a one-point game here before the end of the quarter. And he does. Long pass. Hits the, the netting. And it will be Alvern Ball. Oh, what a what a mess for the Tomahawks here. So it will be Alvern Ball. You know, you, you had the, the quarter running out. You're you up nine to six. Quarter was about to run out. They give him the extra two seconds on the foul. Now you throw a ball up into the rafters, and it's Alvin Ball. They have a chance to get the lead here. Trying to get the student section riled up here. A little bit. There we go. I'm waving my Merrimack TV foam finger. And they're holding up another sign. So we love Sosa. We love you, Mikey. There we go. There it is. <laughs> Finally got him. I figured out the trick, Brian. If I wave the foam finger and make some goofy faces, there then it, is. it lights them up. That's what it takes. I'm giving him a rock and roll face tonight. And the shot is no good as the, the clock should have been started. And no baskets. The referees do call the basket off. Um, he was watching, <laughs> the timekeeper was watching the hand. The hand never went down. And uh, the basket does not count. But oof, what, a, what a sequence there for the, uh, the Tomahawks. That could have been real ugly had they lost the lead there. But they do lead it 9-8 to eight after the first quarter. That was not a, uh, a basketball clinic, I would say. Uh, in that first quarter, but both teams playing uh, very good defense, and um, you know, most notably Garrett Hall of uh, Alvern. Very impressed with, with uh, the job he's done down low. And uh, the Tomahawks coming out of that with a one-point lead. Brian, get in the shot real quick. Oh, yes. <laughs> There are quite a few uh, friends of Merrimack TV here tonight. Cindy Levine is here. She's a photographer, covers uh, just a hobbyist who does a fantastic job, does this for a number, does some photography for a number of high school teams. And it was just a matter of time before I saw, I bumped into Cindy, so. I'm I'll sure be. she'll send us some uh, photos of uh, the Tomahawks for sure, and we'll try to get those up on our Facebook page. Starting five back in there for Merrimack. Let's see if they got the message from Coach Denton. Roy tries a three. Money! 12-8 nice. Merrimack. Boy, what a big shot that was. The way that quarter ended for the Tomahawks, they needed some energy. Kruger for two, no good, rebound Monroe. Roy to DeFossis. They want Infante on the, on the block. They get it to him. Now they kick it back to Beluzzi. That was well defended by Cole Buckham. Oh, Roy had Monroe on the cut. Beluzzi now. Looking inside for Monroe, doesn't have him. Well, it's Infante, rather. Now it, Monroe down low. Misses, puts it back, no good. Nope. Third try, no good. And tipped out of bomb by Alvern. So Bucknum tips that one out of bounds. Monroe had three tries on that one. Couldn't quite put it home. 12-8 in favor of the Tomahawks. Early second quarter. Game two of our doubleheader tonight on Miramac TV. 
So happy you could join us. Luke DeFossis to the corner. Roy for three. Yes! Well, look at uh, DeFossis just draw the defense here, kick it out to Roy. Big three. Alvin back on the other end. No good. Rebound by Jensen Monroe. Faluzzi. They were looking for Infante, but couldn't get it to him on the block on that fast break. Offensive foul. Two, three, white with the shove, and that is Jensen Monroe. And that's his third foul. I believe. Oh, the board's showing one. I have three. I must miss something. Garrett Hall with the take. And it's 15 8. Nice take by David Roy. Roy starting to heat up. He's got eight. 17 10, Merrimack. Good take to the hoop. Valuzzi probably hit him there, but uh, Andrew, Har um, Andrew Harmon with the two. Matt Valuzzi? That is. I know the Valuzis are watching. DeFossis knocks it down. Tomahawks getting hot from the outside. They extend their lead to eight. Nine points the whole first quarter for Merrimack. They have 11 the first three minutes of the second. And looks like, looks like Garrett Hall might have got hit in the eye there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, something in his eye there. Officials do the right thing there, call time. Let him compose himself a little bit, and it'll be Alvin possession. Roy tips it away. Monroe able to collect it. Roy, nice move. Puts it up, it's no good, and the rebound to Alvin. It's gonna be a foul on Infante. First foul on Isaac, sixth on the team. So Alvin will be shooting in the bonus the rest of this half. DeFossis with the foul, and that will put Bettencourt at the line. Well, our friend Peggy down in Florida is watching for DeVosis today. I know that. Thanks for watching, Peggy, and, and anyone joining us uh, from around the country, we want to give you a shout-out, so just hit us up at Twitter, at Merrimack TV, respond to our most recent tweet. Let us know who you're cheering for and where you're watching, how you're watching, whether that's the website or your streaming device. We welcome Broncos fans as well. Follow us at Twitter.com slash Merrimack TV or Facebook.com slash Merrimack TV. Comment on our most recent post or most recent tweet, and we will give you a shout out. Traveling violation on Andrew Harmon. <laughs> Student section, always quick to remind you you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you forget. Yeah. Roy goes inside to DeFossis. Now Monroe, spots up. Trying to look for him inside. Now here's Roy, he's got the hot hand in this second quarter with eight. Flare off. Oh, look for Monroe underneath. Pass was just a little too low. Brian, you think we have any alumni watching tonight? I think so. I'd like to give a shout out to Jack Tarleton. Oh, yes. I'm, I bet he's watching tonight. I have a feeling. I think so. Jack uh, graduated last year, was quite the player, and uh, great showed great sportsmanship and 
he was really proud of his underclassmen, and I, I'm sure he's watching these new Tomahawks tonight. Foul is on Andrew Harmon. About 90 feet away from the basket. Always a tough one. Chip Fund. Sean Chip Fund out of the game for Albert. Let's have a lot of fun seeing that name. Also, our friend Kelly Voluzzi, she's watching. She says, go Tomahawks, go Matt. Number two, awesome replay, Merrimack TV. We are watching on HD 1071. She also sent us a whole series of emojis. Got all the friends of Merrimack TV watching tonight. Everyone's, and I see uh, Maureen Mooney in the stands. She's cheering on David Roy, of course. A lot of friends in the stands tonight. My friend Cindy is here from Manchester taking photos of both teams. Cindy's quite the photographer. I'm going to see if we can get some of her photos and share them to the uh, Merrimack TV Facebook page. She took a shot of uh, Brian and I as well. We'll make that the, a profile pic. As I said, you know, <laughs> the beautiful people at Merrimack TV. We'll send that one to our significant others, Brian. Yes. Dynamic we'll, duo. Who will tell you we have faces for radio. <laughs> Here's Flera. Long two. Way off the mark. And it will oh. be an uh -oh. offensive foul. I wonder if we'll get a replay of that. That is a foul on Ryan. There was a replay. Look. Good take by Mike Flera. Loving the new instant replay feature tonight. You know, that's all yeah. Sledgehammer. Thank you, Justin. Uh, of course, I got to get used to looking at the monitor a little bit more, but. But a great feature. Infante trying to get Rose a nice play by DeWitt. And it will be out of bounds to the Tomahawks. Well, speaking of significant others, mine has joined us here in the uh, front row. We just, we just were talking about you and you appeared. <laughs> That's what happens. Drew McCarthy, no good. Rebound to Alvern. McCarthy, nice take by Ryan Tobin. McCarthy might have fouled him there as well. So a delay of game there. So McCarthy might have got away with the foul. Nice finish by Tobin. And a warning on Garrett Hall for delay of game. This next one would be a technical foul. 20 to 14, our score. About two minutes left in the second half, or the second quarter, rather. DeFossis, nice little spin move, no good. And the rebound to Alburn. Sam DeWitt, they go inside now. They kick it over to the corner. Tobin for three. Yes. Ryan Tobin has scored the last five points for Alvern, and it's a 20 to 17 Tomahawks lead. They've cut it in half. Drew McCarthy for three, no good. Rebound Infante, kicks it to Rosa. Nice athletic play by Infante. And he's fouled by number 10, Garrett Hall. And that is a possession foul for the Tomahawks. McCarthy and DeFossis will take a seat. Krieger back into the game along with Trent Jackson. And they try to get it to Jackson. He was double teamed. And a strong finish by Aiden Mills. One point game in Merrimack. Rosa over to Jackson. Those of you watching our football broadcast, very familiar with him. 
good take by Garrett Hall. Rebound for Alburn. And that is number 23, Connor Hall, who puts it home. 21-20. Broncos. Infante. Now Krieger. 35 seconds left in the half. Infante for three. No good. And the rebound to Alburn. So they're going to try to hold here for one shot. They have the lead here at half to, or as we approach halftime. Hall to Tobin. Back to Hall for three. Big three. Wow. And Rosa brings it back up for Merrimack. Gets it off. No good. How about Connor Hall for Alburn? Big five points to end the half. Alvern ends the half on a 12-0 run. And they have a four-point lead going into halftime. Outstanding job by the Alvern Broncos. Coming back, they get 16 points in that second quarter. Fantastic job. Hey, you're watching Merrimack TV. If you don't already, please subscribe. YouTube.com slash Merrimack TV. Never miss a game. Never miss a meeting. Speaking of meetings, we have a meeting coming up this Thursday, January 12th. The Town of Merrimack Public Works Department will be conducting a public informational meeting relative to the proposed safety and capacity improvements for the U.S. Route 3 Wire Road intersection and its corresponding corridor improvements. This meeting will be held at Town Hall in the Matthew Thornton Room at the Town Council meeting. Uh, beginning at 7 p.m. So if you'd like to provide any uh, public input or comment uh, on th these proposed safety improvements, that's the meeting that you'd want to attend. If you can't attend the meeting, you can always watch it live at MerrimackTV.com or on Channel 20 or HD 1071. And you can watch Merrimack TV on streaming devices via Cablecast ScreenWeave. That's a free app on your Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire devices. So if you'd like to comment on that, that's the meeting to go to. Looks like we have a couple young Tomahawk fans that have taken over the court here at the halftime. We got a couple shout outs. I know that Peggy Silva is watching in Florida cheering on DeFossis, one of our own Tomahawks. I know that Kelly Valuzzi is watching this evening and she's cheering on number two, Matt Valuzzi, which I believe is her nephew. And I gave a shout out earlier to uh, alumni, Jack Tarleton, who I, I just have a feeling he may be watching tonight. Alumni tend to do that. I know that uh, uh, there's a few football alumni that tend to tune in on the football game. So I would not be surprised if there's other uh, Tomahawk varsity basketball alumni that are watching tonight. And if you are, hit us up, twitter.com slash Merrimack TV or our Facebook page. Just respond to our most recent tweet or our most recent Facebook post. Let us know where you're watching and who you're cheering for. Looks like Peggy in Florida says, fun fact, DeFossis is cousins with DeWitt. Oh, no So kidding. we got some inside information there, Brian. I like it. So DeFossis and DeWitt are cousins. DeWitt's a tomahawk. Uh, Bronco. Oh, he's a Bronco. Yes. Okay. Yep, 21. See, I don't have the roster in fr front of me. I'm not the expert that Brian is. I'm just your town's like, media services coordinator. Yeah, I pretend to be one. Also, another Florida red down in Florida. He says, go Coach Denton and Tomahawks. Brian from Florida checking in. Shooters, shoot. That's right. Is that a, that's a basketball term, Brian? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Brian is a uh, another friend of Merrimack TV. We've been in contact a lot over the, the past couple of seasons. And, of course, I want to give a shout-out to my own Justin Slez, our assistant media services coordinator. He's the reason why you're seeing these uh, replays tonight. Thanks for, thanks for spending Friday night here at work, Justin. Although something tells me this is a little bit more fun than covering a, a school board budget meeting. Just maybe a little bit more fun. Potentially. Yeah. Potentially. Uh, the Slez Hammer, as he's been nicknamed by our play-by-play Volunteers, which he takes no offense to that nickname. Oh, none, he likes none. It. Yeah, he nor, likes it. Nor should he. We we wouldn't 
repeat nicknames if the, the person didn't care for them. Right. In fact, I gave Brian a nickname a couple years ago, which was Merrimax Valentine. And, uh... Yeah, he, <laughs> it's, um... He, he doesn't dislike it. <laughs> I'm 50-50. But he's not sure if he likes it. And I, when I sent him the winter schedule this year, I said, hey, we got a game on Valentine's Day. <laughs> Maybe he'll sit that one out. Can't wait for that one. <laughs> we had um, Dave, Dave Roy's dad reached out to uh, to me on Twitter. Um, Mark. Mark, yes. Uh, he reached out last week um, after the North game. And, um, you know, a little fun, you know, uh, back and forth. Said, uh, I think it's time to redo your tears uh, in, in Division One, And um, I would agree, um, you know, based on what we saw in that game um, on Tuesday night. Uh, you know, I, I would consider Merrimack a very strong contender right now for a, a home playoff game. You know, uh, being in that top eight by, by, the, uh, by the end of the season, I, I think very strong contender at this point uh, to get a, a top eight seed. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't certainly put them in that, that championship level tier yet, even though they, they did get the win against North. On, uh, on Tuesday night, but uh, North and Bedford tonight. How about that game? Uh, two, two of the top contenders in Division One. I, I, you know, I, I think North was certainly looking ahead to that Bedford game. Um, you know, which is something teams do, um, unfortunately. Well, there's basketball being played all over the state tonight, and I want to thank uh, my friend Jim McIntosh and his crew at Hudson TV for carrying our feed. I just want to stress uh, to those watching at home, as much as Brian and I would love to see a Tomahawks win tonight, we are so thankful and grateful that Broncos fans are tuning in and watching our feed. We uh, enjoyed watching your JV Broncos win under the guidance of Coach Christian Padno. That was an excellent game, went into overtime. Both Rich Flera and Christian Padno, fantastic coaches. They, they, they keep it positive. I get such a kick out of watching the coaches. Oh, absolutely. Um, and I know uh, uh, Brian Dugan, the girls' varsity basketball coach, he is a friend of Merrimack TV. He's just an outstanding coach. And uh, it, it's, really, it's really great to see such uh, positive sportsmanship amongst players, coaches, and fans alcohol. alike. Well, fans can get a little rowdy. <laughs> That's that, that student section gets a little rowdy. Oh, it certainly can. Uh, but everyone uh, is here for a good time. And... Uh, I just want to thank the Broncos fans for tuning in. It's great watching your teams, and, and we're so happy that you support Community TV both in Hudson and in Merrimack. Both Hudson Community TV and Merrimack TV are member stations of the New Hampshire Coalition for Community Media. You can learn more at uh, nhccm.com, and you can see our sports network calendar. We share each other's feeds quite a bit. Um, you know, we, we lent our feed to Nashua on Tuesday. We lent our feed tonight to Hudson. We, we take Bedford's feed every now and again, mm -hmm. Nashua's feed, and it's just a, a collective of uh, fantastic, professional, community-minded folks who are behind these community TV channels. And uh, we appreciate your support. And uh, follow us on Facebook if you can, facebook.com slash Merrimack TV or twitter.com slash Merrimack TV. Uh, we'd love to give you a shout out. I know that uh, Ava Martin is tuned in and pumped up and says, let's go Tomahawk. So I want to thank Ava and Frank Martin for tuning in tonight. And I hope we do see that Tomahawks win. I told Brian earlier, I'm, I'm hoping for two things tonight. And that was two Tomahawks wins and winning the Mega Millions. <laughs> and uh, I guess if I could get one of those, it's going to be a good night. Well, it looks like Nashua North has woken up. They're up 38-26 after three quarters. I'm sorry, at uh, halftime. Um, and my other correspondent telling me big game in girls basketball tonight, BG leading Pinkerton after three quarters, and it has been a laugher. 66-25 uh, to 25 after the third quarter. And Pinkerton is one of the best teams in Division I. Uh, so BG just laying it on Pinkerton tonight. Um, and also my friend uh, Jim Troop checking in says boom. 
Go Broncos. He is uh, an Alvern alum tuning in tonight. So uh, shout out to Jim. I'm going to give a shout out to Ralph Carpentier, who is a Alvern alum as well. He's one of our play by football play by play volunteers. And uh, I know he was going to swing by tonight. I think it was too difficult for him, you know, being in a yeah. room with his. Uh, well, you know. His all, alma mater, and and then also, you know, he he holds the Tomahawks near and dear to his heart for sure. So he would have been split right down in the middle. <laughs> you know, uh, ultimately, Nick, I, I think he was intimidated by me. That's true. You know. Uh, well, you are, you know, you are <laughs> beloved, Brian. People love I, that you, you do this. And uh, I know Justin and I are, are, are so thankful for your participation. You really, we make you look good. You make us sound excellent. Uh, from time to time, when I when I get the names right, you know, particularly on last baskets, um, <laughs> you know, if you, if you missed the JV game earlier, um, Alvern tied the game on a on a last second tip to send it to overtime and won in overtime, and of course I got the name completely wrong at the end of the game, so um, completely butchered that one. Brian, you think I can get this student section lit up? I say yes. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. All it takes is some funny faces. <laughs> that's that's the secret. That's the secret sauce, Brian. Funny faces. I got I got plenty of those. We are about to start the third quarter of play. Alburn's going to have the basketball in a four-point lead. They ended the first half on a 12-0 run. You can imagine a very lively locker room at halftime, I would bet, for Merrimack. And they come out with a quick two points. That's Aiden Mills. A little breakdown in the Tomahawks defense there. Now Roy gets the screen from Infante. Alvin with its largest lead of the night. They lead 26 to 20. Monroe gets the cutter. Back to Monroe. He misses the lay-in. Rebound Infante. Left hand is good. Isaac Infante with four points. 26-22. And a foul on Matthew Beluzzi. Second foul on him. Four point lead for the Broncos. Coming in at 0 and 5 on the season. And a travel. There are five losses, though. No slouches in there. Uh, you know, in Portsmouth, Exeter, South. Windham we lost by three to Windham. Played very tough against Exeter. The fifth one is escaping my mind right now, but they got a tough schedule to start. Defossus inside to Infante, back to Defossus. Tomahawks trying to get something going here. Cut into this four-point lead. Monroe gets the post up. Brought it down and was stripped by Garrett Hall. And the lay-in for Andrew Harmon. Four points for Harmon. 28-22, Alvern. Monroe, uh, Infante rather for three, no good. Three-point try is good nice. for Kim Kruger. Alvin with its biggest lead of the night, 31-22. Roy to Infante. Now Monroe. Monroe is fouled by Andrew Harmon. So Merrimack uh, in a tough spot here, down by nine. Terry Schmidt 
on Facebook has told us, go Merrimack, go Matt Schmidt, number 33. Some more Tomahawks fans letting us know they're watching. I wonder where Terry is watching from. Terry, let us know if you're local or if you're watching in another state. We have a few Tomahawk fans in Florida tonight. Justin and I have asked Peggy Silva for an invite. We'd like to get some sunshine. Good take inside by DeWitt. What a strong finish. And another turnover for Merrimack. This is not the start Austin Denton was looking for in this second half. And he's going to talk it over with his team. Broncos lead by 11. Two and a half minutes into this third quarter. A very slow start for the Tomahawks in the second half. Alvern coming out firing. Four different scorers. The run now for Alvern is 21 to 2. Doing an outstanding job. And <laughs> more, more antics from the student section. <laughs> And from our own Nicholas LaValle. <laughs> Trying to get Whatever him, I can get, get him get fired up here. Up. Oh, there we go. They want it. Okay, here we are. Let's go, boys. <laughs> there it is. So the Tomahawks uh, trying to figure this out here. Oh, we got instant replay. Yes. <laughs> there we go. It's a replay on the student section. Well done, Slez. <laughs> Very nice. Great job, Slez Hammer. Great job, student section. We got some cowboy we're, we're hats right. there tonight. Got a couple different signs. I hope to see a Merrimack TV sign at some point. One that, of these days, that made right? my day. It's a sign that says, you know, just Merrimack TV. Uh, Alvin Ball there. DeWitt gets it in. And a big basket for Andrew Harmon. 13 point lead for Alvin. Rose out of DeFossis inside to Roy. Kicks it over to Morrison. Had a little trouble with it, able to recover. Morris into Rosa. Now the boss is in the corner. Nice defense by Albert. They're doing a tremendous job tonight, keeping the ball out of the middle. They're forcing Infante to catch it out here at the perimeter. That is not where he is best. Roy inside. Nice finish. Well, usually it's Roy to Infante. This time, Infante goes to Roy down low. And it's now an 11 point game. Three point bid, no good. And Merrimack looking to get numbers. Nice job by Garrett Hall getting back on the play. They did not allow Merrimack to get set up oh a very awkward layup there and DeWitt gets hammered by DeFossis you know Brian I know the Veluzis are watching I got a question for Kelly or maybe you do you think that Jim does his Jim Veluzi dances even from home when watching from oh, home oh I would imagine he has to churn the butter that was one of his dance moves that's one thing we are missing this year for sure <laughs> and DeWitt makes the first. So DeWitt and DeFoss is so Cousins battling out here on the court tonight. That last foul was on Noah Morrison. 36-24 Alvern. <laughs> it's good. Alvern playing a very strong third quarter. They lead 37-24. Merrimack needs something here to break the momentum. 
<laughs> Infante draws a quick double team and travels. I think his left foot slid. Now Merrimack's going to try some pressure here. Tipped away by DeFosses. And a big bucket for Bucknum. Boy, Alvin pouring it on here. They lead 39-24. David Roy for Merrimack. Had a big second quarter. He's been very quiet here in the third. Has the one bucket. And again, the whole team has been quiet for about the last seven or eight minutes. DeFosses, ball fake. And he will go to the line. Terry Schmidt, who said go Merrimack, go Matt Schmidt, number 33, has let us know that they're watching from Merrimack, and they said, love that I can watch Matt and take care of our littles. So I can only imagine that our littles are Matt's siblings, probably younger brother and or sister. He's, um, he's got a lot of siblings. I know the family. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah, a lot of siblings. Glad we could do that for you, Terry. Thanks so much for supporting Merrimack TV. If you want to see the other games that we're covering this season, you can go to YouTube, or excuse me, MerrimackTV.com slash sports. Nice and our board. updated calendar is right there, available for you to see. We'll be back here on Tuesday night for girls varsity basketball. It's Spalding. Infante hits the jumper. Well, mid-range J there for Isaac, 39-27. Merrimack trying to stay in this game. DeWitt kicks it back to Harmon and a traveling violation. Merrimack ball. <laughs> 223 left, third quarter. 39-27, Alburn looking for its first win of the season. And we're going to get a foul on Bucknum, I believe. It is. Rosa, three-point try, way off the mark. And out of bounds. DeFosses got a nice little tip there, but Chip Funds got the double tip and uh, knocked it out of bounds. Denton wants him to push the pace here. Team trailing by 12. Rosa, nice take to the rack. He's got four for Merrimack. Look at this drive by Jackson Rosa. Little jump stop in the finish. Ten point game. And a foul on Infante. Yes. Just got word from Kelly Veluzzi saying Jimmy V has been stirring the kettle all night watching number two. <laughs> we are loving the replays. Emma is jealous. We didn't have them last year. Go Tomahawks with a series of heart and basketball emojis. We love the Veluzzi fam. Thank you so much, Kelly and Jim and Emma for tuning in. Loose ball goes to Alvern. And the rebound by Rosa. Chance to get this down to single digits. Flera tried to go inside. Probably, probably a bounce pass there might have gotten in. DeWitt is blocked by Rosa, but right into the hands of Evan Betancourt. Big sequence there. Infante puts it up and in. Six in the quarter for Infante. Eight in the game. Ten-point game. Merrimack trying to go half-court trap here. Betancourt almost turned it over. 
Oh, they get Rosa for a foul. Wow. You know, we were talking about Friends of Merrimack TV in the house tonight. I see music director Bunny Serenita is here cheering on the Tomahawks. 10 point game. Shout out to our music department. The, uh, the pace of this game has picked up dramatically in this third quarter. That first half was not the most aesthetically pleasing if you're a basketball fan, but offensive foul called by the ref under the hoop. Wow. Well, that's interesting. And Merrimack can get it to single digits here. Cameron Kruger back into the game for Alvern. And uh, he'll give Sam DeWitt a breather. Big possession for the Tomahawks. If for nothing else, for some confidence going into the fourth quarter. Roy from the elbow, no good. Rebound by Chip Fun. 10 seconds left. DeWitt loses the ball and a traveling violation. And I, I think by the letter of the law, we should get two seconds on the clock, right? Let's go. Sit down. Come on. Yeah, oh yeah, Jack Jackson Rosa remembers that play from the first quarter. Well, not this time. Well, at the end of three, it'll be 41-31 in favor of Alvern. That was a very similar play to the, the foul at the end of the first quarter that res almost resulted in four points for Alvern when uh, they were awarded an extra two seconds. And, and the timing of that was very, very similar. But uh, I am not one to hold grudges. We move on. 17 points in that third quarter for Alvern. And for Merrimack, it was a slow start to that third quarter. Uh, they end up getting 11 more for a total of 31. So they get to come out hot here. I believe it is Merrimack ball to start the fourth quarter. It is. Crowd trying to urge them on here. So Alvin certainly woke up in that third quarter. Tomahawks woke up towards the end of that quarter. And we'll see now if they can uh, maybe come back here and get the win tonight. All right, here's Rosa. Backdoor cut, David Roy finishes. What a dime from Rosa. And the finish from Roy. Let's get another look at that one. Backdoor cut in the finish. Betancourt for three. Oh, a big trade for Evan Betancourt. 44 to 33 is an 11 point Alvern lead. Well, that's a backbreaker there. That is Alvern Ball. They say it was not tipped. Looks like a little 2 3 pressure by the Tomahawks. Oh, they got beaten there. That's the risk you take. Bancourt makes it a 13 point game. Roy back to uh, Infante, right back to Roy. Now to Fossus. Over to Flera, three-point bid is no good. He can't find the touch tonight after that first tray. Chip Fund is guarded, double team there. Ryan Tobin to the corner, Kruger for three. Way off. And the 
foul is going to be called on Hall. Forty-six, thirty-three, Broncos. And Merrimack is going to discuss things here. As they trail by 13 with six and a half minutes to go. Well, we talked about this game being a, um, you know, ha having serious letdown potential tonight, you know, after a big win. And, you know, Merrimack having a hard time in this one. Alvin certainly coming out ready and uh, coming out high energy. And <clears throat> they, they have, they have um, been up to the task tonight. For sure. And we have a, a lot of people watching at home tonight, whether that's cheering on the Broncos, as we are broadcasting on Hudson Community TV Channel 21 this evening. And, of course, you can watch Merrimack TV from anywhere at MerrimackTV.com and on streaming devices via Cablecast Screenweave. I want to thank our friends uh, Peggy Silva, uh, Terry, Iva, and Frank Martin, uh, Gina and Rover in Manchester, and Terry Schmidt, thanks for watching. And if you'd like to get a shout out, just hit us up at twitter.com slash Merrimack TV or facebook.com slash Merrimack TV and comment on our most recent posts. A big breakdown there in the Alvin defense. Jackson Rosa right to the basket. And we have an 11 point game. Three point try is good. Sean Chipboy. Boy, every time. Merrimack gets a, a two. Alvin comes back with a big three. 14 point lead. Rosa back to Roy. Tries a three. Off the mark. Rebound by Alvin. Oh, and they get the timeout before Flara gets the steal. 5.46 left, fourth quarter. And the second half has been pretty much all Alvern as uh, they lead 49-35. Colton McCarthy is watching tonight from York, Maine. Colton and Evelyn McCarthy uh, in York, Maine are cheering on a cousin, Drew McCarthy, saying go Tomahawks. I got to say, Colton, I love York, Maine. That's probably one of my favorite places. I spent a lot of time up in Cape Nettick. And uh, I love York. Can't go wrong hitting up Cape Nettick or the Gunkwit. Such a beautiful area. Love getting myself a Flo's hot dog up there. Um, you spend any time up there, Brian? Oh, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, we like, definitely cool. like it up there. I like biking from Cape Nettick into short, uh, over to Short Sands Beach, spending some time at uh, the arcade there. <laughs> Spent many a days playing NBA Jam at that arcade at Short Sands in my younger days. Well, this one's not over, but Merrimack needs... A big time run here. DeFoss is gonna try to get it started. He does with a three. Not done yet, 51-38. I'm sure Peggy Silva just jumped out and of her couch, off the couch seeing that three-pointer. As a foul on Rosa. Boy, tough, uh, tough night for the Tomahawk girls too. They are down 42 to 20 at Alvern going into the fourth quarter. And North and Bedford. Looks like 43-39 North in the fourth. Rosa pushes ahead to Flera. And he is rejected out of bounds. Thirteen point lead for Alburn. Every possession huge now for the Tomahawks. They can't afford any wasted. Rosa for three. No good. He just missed that one. Oh, and a tough pass by Krieger. He gets the tip. Almost tied it up. And we got a jump ball. Looks like it's going to be Alburn ball.
Oh, one of the things you like to see as a coach there, you know, Krieger turned it over, but he was the first man back and stopped the layup. A good play by Mason. And he gets a block right there. Out of bounds to Alvern. 4.49 to go. Ryan Tobin gets a nice hand on his way out for Alvern. They lead by 13. Hall inside. He's fouled by Krieger. So Garrett Hall at the line. He'll shoot a pair. That follows on Mason Krieger, his first. And the first one is no good for Hall. Hall's second is good. 52-38, Broncos. Flair to Krieger for two. No good. Flera tries to get position. It's out of bounds off Flera. Alvin with the basketball up 14. 4.30 to go. Inside. Nice play. Oh, he tried to throw it down, but he was fouled. And that is going to be on Luke DeFossis. Well, Hall nearly threw that thing down. He'll go to the line for a pair here. Tomahawks at one point in this game led by eight. It was 20 to 12. Kind of late in the in the second uh, second quarter. Since then, it has been all Alvern. First free throw, no good for Hall. He has seven points for Alvern. Second free throw, no good. Out of bounds to Merrimack. Well, needless to say, Tomahawks need a basket here. <clears throat> Can't have many wasted possessions, as we mentioned. Rosa over to Flera. Now Roy, top of the key for three. Way off. And it will be Flera tying it up. It'll be Merrimack ball. That could have been a big three there had that fallen. Ooh, the Broncos faithful making their voices heard. There are definitely some Broncos fans here tonight in house and watching at home. Thanks for tuning in. Rosa will go to the line for a pair. And I believe that was on Sean Chipfund. And Rosa at the line, shooting two. No good. These are only the uh, third and fourth free throws of the night for the Tomahawks. Jensen Monroe back in. He'll get uh, Veluzzi. Big free throw here for Rosa. And he hits. Seven points for Jackson. And now the pressure out now for the Tomahawks. They need turnovers. They need stops. They need something. They don't need that. Sam DeWitt to the line for two. Rosa 
gets his third. 52-39 in favor of the Alvern Broncos. The visitors tonight, they are uh, on their way to the, it appears to their first win of the season. They can hang on here. Free throw is good. Rosetta Roy. Back now to DeFossis in the corner. Roy, baseline drive. Closed off. They skip it over to Jensen Monroe. Looking for a screen is Mike Flera. And almost stolen by Kruger. DeFossis, offensive foul. Taken by Hall. Fourteen point lead for Alvern and uh, boy that's a that's a big call there. Nice play by Rosa to Flera and he misses the shot. Stolen by DeFossis back to Rosa for two. No. DeFossis tip, no good. And Roy tries to save it. Out of bounds, it'll be Alvin Ball. Boy, you get two steals there. Another near turnover and nothing to show for it. That's been the story of the night for the Tomahawks, unfortunately. Oh, he was getting ready to call. Inside, Hall. No good. Rebound to Fosses. They need buckets and they need them quick. And another turnover. Nice hustle by the Fosses. But it's going to stay Alvin Ball. Oh, well, we've seen crazier things happen. 14 points in two and a half minutes. Could be a little, little more to make up than uh, we could probably expect here. And we got a timeout. With two and a half minutes to go. Alvern leading by 14. A reminder: our next broadcast here on Merrimack TV, Tuesday night, 6:30. Girls basketball against Spalding. That's and, right. Uh, and also, if there is anyone watching who'd like to do play-by-play -play for the hockey game on Wednesday, we are in need of someone to do play-by-play -play for hockey. Um, otherwise, we may not necessarily be able to cover the game, which we don't want to do. Uh, if, we, if we don't cover that hockey game, the next time you'll see hockey on Merrimack TV will be on the 23rd versus Nashua North. But uh, as Brian said, next week you could see the girls' basketball game versus Spalding. And on the 20th, boys' basketball versus Bishop Girton. That's going to be a big one. Looking forward to that one. I'm sure the town manager will be in the house that night. It's no secret that he uh, went to Bishop Girton. So he has that same sort of conflict <laughs> attending these games. Although when you look at it, it's like, you know, you can't really, you can't really lose when you're kind of pulling for both teams, right? Big three, no good. Rebound by David Roy. Rosa to Monroe for three. No. M Monroe, nice follow. Merrimack ball. North defeated Bedford tonight. Big, big win for North. So they respond to getting their first loss here Tuesday by handing Bedford its first loss. Flare off for three. Put it in there. Six points for Mike Flara. And a turnover. Not over yet. 53-42. You got to hit some shots, though. Flera gonna try again. Yes, sir. Well, now. 
Let's get a look at that one on replay. Look at that soft touch. Same spot as the other one. And all of a sudden, it is 53-45. And we had a, you know, about 10 seconds left, uh, or two, about 210. And now 10 seconds, you, you got an eight-point game instead of a 14-point game. Not that the student section necessarily needs it. They seem pretty uh, amped up at the moment with the last two minutes left to the game. But I went ahead and put the camera on them. I'm giving them that Aramac TV wave. Well, that was a very animated <laughs> timeout by Alvern head coach Leo Gershgorin. Telling his team, stop being so comfortable. Well, play with some urgency. Good trap by the Tomahawks. And another timeout. And a timeout. This one for Alburn. So he is out of timeouts. There's our friend uh, Cindy Levine taking some sports photography tonight. If I can get her attention, might not be able to. <laughs> Thanks for coming out and taking photos, Cindy. Hopefully we can get a couple photos of uh, our Merrimack Tomahawks up on the uh, Facebook page next week. That'd be great. Well, it's a full timeout, and um, Albert's got to deal with this press now. Tomahawks, every foul now, Alvin will be shooting two. So uh, that's the predicament that they're in. Alvin is going to have to hit their free throws. They were a two of six in the fourth quarter. Merrimack also in the bonus. But, uh, you know, those two threes by Flera, you turned a 14-point game into a six, uh, into an eight-point game in, in, you know, less than 10 seconds. Now it's a very different story here. Quick trap by the Tomahawks. Oh, they almost get the jump. Now a two-on-one for the Alvern. And Hall gets fouled by David Roy. Well, Hall has had his struggles at the line here in the fourth quarter. He's one of three. I guess if you're going to have somebody at the line, maybe this is it. Big first free throw for Hall. Off the back of the iron. Well, don't go away yet, folks. If you turn this one off, come back. Yeah, you really don't know what's going to happen in this last minute and a half or so. 54-45. Three possession game. You don't need threes now. You just need points. Rosa for three. No good. Didn't take my advice. But that would have been a big one. And a foul on Rosa on the push. Clayton Denon, alumni class of 2003 is watching. Brother of coach Austin Denton and godfather of Jackson Rosa. Says go Tomahawks. I told you there'd be alma mater watching tonight, Brian. Absolutely. I know Emma Valuzzi's watching. I assume Jack Tarleton's watching. And now we have Clayton Denton watching as well. Class of 03. Cheering on Coach Austin Denton tonight. Jackson Rosa has fouled out of tonight's game. He's got seven points on the night. I believe that's a season high for Jackson. DeWitt rolls in the first. It's now back to a, a four possession game. And it's good. Now you need some threes, I think. Or you need to hold on to the ball. 56 45 in favor of Alvin. I didn't think it could get any louder here, Brian. It's getting loud.
Ben Quick got fouled, no shot. And oh, and we got some, we got some fisticuffs. Oh, very unfortunate. And we're gonna have. We got some free throws here for sure for Auburn. And we'll have to see what happens here. Auburn uh, up by 11. They're going to get free throws and the ball for sure. Probably a technical on Belusi. Let's let's see what happens. So let's see what the, we got the trying to get the call here from the officials. Technical foul on Faluzi. Some folks just seem to be a bit too excited tonight, Brian. That's what it appears. So they got personal foul on DeFosses. A technical foul on Veluzzi. And we're going to have some shots. It will be Aiden Mills at the line for Alvern. And I think he, he was the one that was fouled initially. So let's see what happens here. Rolls in the free throw. We'll see if they let him shoot all four here. These are the technical free throws. And now here come. Oh no, those are the personal foul. Here are the technicals. Sam DeWitt's going to shoot these. So Tomahawks kind of lost their cool here at the end. DeWitt hits that one. And here comes the fourth of the series of free throws. And he hits that one. DeWitt five of six here in the fourth quarter. And it will now be Alvern Ball, 59-45. DeWitt guarded by Mike Flera. As we're back underway here. Alvin gets the basketball back. They look inside. Hall. This is Garrett Hall. Guarded by Monroe. He gets it over to Chip Fund. Alvin's just going to pass it around a little bit here. Nice back cut. And in. Sam DeWitt for two. He's got seven in this fourth quarter. And Alvern by 17, uh, by 16. I can't do math. Roy. His shot no good. And the rebound to the Broncos. So Alvern's going to get their first win of 22-23. Roy gets the foul. And DeWitt's going to shoot a couple more. So, big win tonight for Alvern. You know, we, we mentioned they were right there with the, you know, all the games they lost, they were right there the, this year, all by single digits, I believe. And it played some tough opponents. Nashua South, Exeter, those guys are no slouches. And now, uh, nice hand from the Alvern fans as uh, they get their bench guys in. DeWitt extends the lead to 17. What a statement tonight made by Auburn. 
Nice job by Sam DeWitt at the free throw line tonight. He's been money. David Roy, baseline drive, and he's fouled hard on the play. And he will shoot two. Foul is on Cameron Porter. Roy's going to shoot a pair here. And first one's no good. Roy has 12 points on the night, leading the Tomahawks. And it's good. Second one. 63-46. Flero with the foul on DeWitt. And DeWitt will go back to the line. DeWitt is uh, 9 of 10 from the line in the second half. And he has 13 points in the game. Thanks for tuning in to Merrimack TV tonight. If you'd like to catch a replay of this game, you can do so tomorrow at youtube.com slash Merrimack TV. Please subscribe while you're there so you never miss a game or a meeting. You can turn on that bell, get notified whenever we post new content. Quite a bit of uh, Tomahawks games up there. Merrimack High Middle School concerts as well. And of course, next Thursday, as I mentioned, the Department of Public Works will be presenting a public hearing and presentation relative to the Route 3 Wire Road intersection. If you want to participate, you can do so in person at Town Hall, 7 p.m. That's Thursday the 12th. There'll be a public comment period. can't make it, you can always watch it live on Merrimack TV. Big shout out tonight to all of our friends of Merrimack TV, Kelly and Jim Veluzzi, Terry, Ava, Peggy Silva. Monroe hits the first free throw for Merrimack. It's all moot at this point. Colton and York. Clayton, class of 03. Thanks for watching tonight. And out of bounds will be Albert Ball. They're going to try to run off the clock here. So a big, big win tonight for the Albert Broncos. Showing they are much better than their record. Merrimack will drop to three and three on the season. Albert will go to one and five. And Roy hits the basket. To make it 65-50, but that is it. The uh, Broncos with a big win tonight. Here on the road. And the Tomahawks. Dropped to three and three on the year. Alvern wins it 65 to 50. Brian, thanks for doing play by play tonight. I got one last shout out. Frank Martin says, Lori Slide Martin, class of 93, cheerleader extraordinaire is watching tonight. So thank you so much, Lori and the Martin family for watching. If I forgot you during our fan recap, I apologize. I think I got everyone, though. I think I got everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in to Merrimack TV. Thank you, Brian Gagnon, for volunteering your time and doing play-by-play. -play. Can't thank you enough. We're super grateful for your participation. I know you have the whole fam here now, and I hope you have a, a fantastic weekend. Absolutely. You too, Nick, and uh, good working with you again tonight. And uh, we'll see you again Tuesday night uh, for girls basketball against Spalding. Absolutely, and thank you to the Sledgehammer for these instant replays tonight. Thank you, Justin. Outstanding. You're watching Merrimack TV, your community, your voice.